Hey, it's Busy Guy from busymedia.com.au and today we have a very special tutorial for you. It's an introduction to WordPress. Hi, I'd like to welcome you to these WordPress tutorial videos. Now, in these videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that you can get your very own WordPress site up and running in way less than an hour. Now, if you aren't too familiar with WordPress, WordPress is web-based software that you can use to create beautiful websites and blogs. WordPress is used by over 60 million different websites right now, and it's a proven and reliable technology that's always evolving and always changing for the better. Now, if you aren't real familiar with WordPress, it's very simple to use. There's lots of tutorial videos and written material out there to help you get going. But I think that these videos that I've created for you are really going to help you get off to a fast start. Now, before we get going, there are a couple of things that you're going to need. These are, this is going to be a WordPress installation on your own domain. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get yourself a domain if you don't already have a domain name yet. And you can go to godaddy.com or namecheap.com to get yourself a domain name. And I use GoDaddy. I've used them for geez, probably about eight years or so. I've never had a problem with them and I like them very much. They have good prices. They're always running specials. And for me anyway, they've been very reliable. Okay. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is you're going to need a web hosting account, okay? And I recommend that you get a hosting account that has true cPanel or control panel backend. And that's very important. You're going to want to make sure that the hosting that you get has a control panel. And I use HostGator. This is another service that I've used for many different years. There are plenty of different hosting solutions that you can use, but you do want to make sure that you use one of the larger brands that's out there. Like I said, I like HostGator. I recommend you use HostGator, but if you're already using a hosting provider, by all means use them if you're happy with them. So before we get going, like I said, you're going to want to make sure that you have a domain name and then that you have a hosting account. And once you have all that, you're going to want to go to your cPanel, okay, your control panel, which is going to be your website, okay, forward slash cPanel. And you can see that's where I am right here. So before we continue too far with these videos, I'd like to make sure that you go ahead, get yourself a domain name and get yourself hosting, and then come back to this page where I am right now, which is basically going to be your domain name forward slash cPanel. And from there, I'll see you in the next video, and I'm going to show you how to get this installed and set up right away. Okay, we're back with another video. This is a wonderful video, which is WordPress install method part one. So now in this video, what I'd like to do is I'm going to show you how to go ahead and install WordPress from inside of your control panel or your cPanel. So you're going to want to visit your website, okay, forward slash cPanel, and that's where I am right now. Okay, that's where I am right now. And once you log in, you're going to see something that looks a little bit like this. Now, if you've never been inside of a cPanel hosting account before, you'll see up here that they do have some getting started wizard. They have video tutorials. There's all kinds of things that you can do from inside of here. But what we're going to be looking for is I'd like you to scroll down. Okay. I'd like you to scroll down and you're going to see this area right here where it says software and services. Okay. And from in there, you're going to see a smiley face. Okay. And there's a program inside of here called Fantastico Deluxe. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and click on Fantastico Deluxe. Okay. And what it does, it, it's going to tell you right here, Fantastico, what it does is it automatically 
will install certain programs onto your web host. And one of the programs that it can install for you is WordPress. So if you look over here on the left, under blogs, you'll see right here it says WordPress. And what I'd like you to do is just click on WordPress. Okay. And from here, you're going to have a couple of choices. You can go to the WordPress support forum or you can go ahead and click on new installation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can see I have no current installations on here. So I'm going to click on new installation. Now, from here, we'll see this page right here. Now, the first thing you have to decide is if you want WordPress right on your domain, right at the base of your domain, basically, so that if someone visits yourdomain.com, they'll automatically be in your WordPress. Or if you have a different type of site where you don't want WordPress on the front end, you can also create a folder here or a directory so that it would be inside of a directory. An example of that would be like if you had a, a sales site and you wanted to put your WordPress in like a blog area, you could just go ahead and type blog right here. But for my purposes and to make things easy on everyone, what we're going to do is we're going to just install it right in the root directory. Okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to have to choose is we're going to have to go ahead and choose an administrator username. Now, what I'd like to recommend to you is that you not use admin. Admin is the standard that most people use for WordPress. And when you use admin, you kind of leave yourself vulnerable, if you will, to attacks from hackers and whatnot, because they can easily go ahead and try and hack into your password if they know your username. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call my administrator username, main user, you can use whatever you want. And then you're going to need to go ahead and enter in a password. And what I've done here is I've used this very, very fancy password. Not a fancy, but it's a very hard to guess password. And what I did was I used a password generator to go ahead and get me that password. If you want to go to Google, if you just type in a search for password generator, you'll see that there's all kinds of password generators that are out here online. One that I've used in the past is this strong password generator. And what it allows you to do is create some really almost unbelievably tough passwords that would be very hard for anyone to crack. So you can go ahead and go to this one here, strong password generator. Decide how many characters you want to use. Like I, I'll use an 11 character password. And you just click on this generate strong password. And you'll see that it's going to generate a password here that's virtually impossible for anyone to, to guess. Okay, I mean, it would be virtually impossible. But if you are going to use strong password generator or service like this, you definitely want to make sure that you write down this password in a safe and secure area. So I have already, I've chosen a very good password. I'm, I'm positive that this password is going to work well for me. And what you can do here is go ahead and create your admin nickname. Okay, for mine, I'm just going to use my own name. Okay, you're going to want to add in your admin email address. Okay, which is just going to be your email address. And then here, you're going to want to use your site name. If you see right here, WordPress has already gone in and used my actual domain name as my site name, but I don't want to use that. What I want to do is I want to use you know, some keywords that would be good for search engine optimization. It's not good for your site name to just be your domain name. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this in word format so that it looks like actual words and not just uh, a domain name. And then the same thing you'll use for your description. Use some words that describe your website 
pretty well. So if you had a, a website about cars, you'd want to you know have cars in your description here. So I. That's what I've done. Now the next thing that you want to do is just go ahead and once you've filled these out, go ahead and click on install WordPress. Okay. It's going to ask you on this next page. It's going to say, hey, we're going to be installing WordPress at this domain name. Here's where it's going to be. Click on finish installation if that's what you want. I'll go ahead, click on finish installation. Okay, and you can see that WordPress has gone ahead and been installed. And what you're going to get right here, okay, is your username and password as well as the login for your WordPress dashboard are going to be right here. So you're going to just want to copy this and put that in a safe place. All right. And that's going to do it for this video. WordPress is already installed using Fantastico. If you need any help, just go ahead and rewatch this video. It's going to show you step by step how to go ahead and do this. Here we go. This next video for you guys is the WordPress install method part two. All right. Now, in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a second, even faster way to go ahead and install WordPress. So once again, you're going to want to log into your control panel, okay? And you're going to scroll down again. You're going to go to where it says Software and Services. And from here, you're going to see this little, it looks like a stopwatch, and it says Quick Install. I want you to go ahead and click on Quick Install. And over here, you can see that there's numerous different um, pieces of software and web software that you can install with this. But what you're going to want to do is right over here on the left where it says WordPress, you're going to just want to click on that. Okay. And from here, you're going to want to click the continue button. And what this is going to do is this is going to offer you some of the same questions that were in the Fantastico, but just in a little more streamlined presentation. And from here, what we can do is we can once again choose if we want it to appear in our root directory or if we want to put it into a different folder. Okay. And all we're going to have to do here is put in your admin name, your blog prep, your blog title, which is going to be my word. demo site, add your first name and your last name, and then just click install now. Now, I personally, I don't like using this method of installing WordPress so much because it does, it doesn't give you the choice to choose your own admin username. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I don't use it. Some people don't like Fantastico, or some people just can't quite get the hang of installing with Fantastico. So this is a little bit easier way to install WordPress. And if you're looking for the absolute simplest way to install WordPress, this would be the way. But I do recommend that you use the Fantastico method that I showed you in method one. But if you do want to use this way, you just go ahead and click install now. It's going to install, and on the next page, it'll give you your login and password. But like I said, I'd rather not use this method. I'd rather you just use the Fantastico Deluxe because I've found, and a lot of my students and clients have found, that it's just a much easier way. And it's a little bit more secure when you can choose the administrator username rather than just going with the admin but it is a different way that you can install it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a video that I think you are really going to need and use. This one is how to update WordPress so you can have the latest version.
All right. So now in this video, hopefully you've gotten your WordPress installed using either method one or method two. I definitely, like I said, I recommend you use Fantastico. And once you have installed WordPress, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the WordPress login address, okay, which you would have been given when you installed WordPress. And from there, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and enter in your username, okay, and then just go ahead, enter in your password that you were given, and then click on the login button. Now, once you've logged in, if it's your first time inside of WordPress, there's probably going to be a couple of pop-up messages. And it's also going to tell me that right up here that the latest version of WordPress is available. So what I'd like you to do is if you're going to get, if you get this message, you won't always get this message, but you can see the WordPress version that my web host has installed is 3.31. Okay, and the newest version is 3.5, so that's quite a big difference. So what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and click the Update Now button. And what it's going to do before updating, please back up your databases and files. Because this is a brand new version, we don't really need to do that because we don't have our, our content in here yet. So all that you need to do is click on the Update Now and what it's going to do is it's going to install the latest version for you. Okay, you can see we're in WordPress 3.5 now. It's going to tell us what's new. There's all kinds of new features. It has a nice new default theme. It's retina ready, meaning that real sharp detail you can get. Nice color. It tells you all the different changes that were made. Okay. Now, the other thing that I'd like you to do is over here on plugins, okay? We haven't really installed any, but there are, um, there is one plugin that does have an update available. So if you just click on update available, okay, we can go ahead and click that. And it's telling me that there's a new version available. So we just want to click on. Oh, I'm sorry. We just want to go ahead and. If you want to just write down here, it's telling us there is a new version of this available. It gives us the details and we can choose to update it now. And if we just click on update now it's going to go ahead and update that for us. Okay. I didn't even have that plugin activated yet, but now it is. Okay. It's a plugin that I don't use, but I did want to make sure that it was updated so that you can see how that you would update your different plugins and update WordPress itself. Okay. So now we're in the latest version of WordPress. Over here, we have our dashboard here, over here on the side. You can see we get this little notice here saying that there's two updates. And it's saying, hey, you have the latest version. There's nothing that you need to update in the WordPress itself. The only thing you might want to update would be these themes, but we're not going to be using it. These are older themes, like from 2011 and 2010. We're going to be using the newest theme of WordPress when we're starting. So we're not going to have to update it all. And you can see over here on the left side, your dashboard, it has all the different posts where you can add posts, you can add pages, you can add links, you can add media, which would be photos or videos. You can set your appearance. You can do all kinds of things over here on the left side. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some ways that we can go ahead and configure WordPress so that it looks good. Like if we go to WordPress right now, okay, 
if we go to our website right now, this is what it looks like right now. It looks like, you know, there's nothing. There's a sample post in here, but it's not the best looking site in the world just yet. But it's going to get there. And in these next videos, I'm going to show you some ways to make WordPress work a lot better. Oh, once you have WordPress, you are going to want to know how to configure everything in WordPress. So we have this wonderful video for you on how to configure WordPress. All right, now in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you a couple of ways that you can make WordPress a little bit more user-friendly and then also make it a little bit more search engine friendly as well. Now over here on the left side, I want you to, if you aren't here yet, just click on Dashboard. Make sure you're on Dashboard. And over here on the left-hand side, go all the way down to the bottom and you're going to see uh, a link named Settings. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to click on the Settings. Okay. And then the first settings that we're going to come to are going to be the General Settings. And what I'd like you to do is just make sure, when we installed WordPress, we did this, but let's just make sure again that our site title is very clear and concise about what this website is about. Also make sure that you have your keywords, which should go along with what the site is about as well. So you can see my website is on a WordPress demo site, so I've named it my WordPress demo site. And then my tagline is demo website for WordPress. Pretty simple. Below that, you're going to see the URL as well as the site address. Here you can change if you'd like the site address to be different than the actual address that is right here. Like if you did want to put it in a different folder, you would have earlier had this in a different folder. So instead of just being... Um, the straight domain name like it is on mine. Yours might be, you know, blog over here or something like that. But for now, we're just going to leave these how they are. Make sure that your email address is correct. Um, we're going to want to, you can change around the date format. Like you can see, there's a couple different date formats that you can use and a couple different time formats that you can use. So you're going to just want to, if there's anything in here that you do want different, if your email address is different, make sure that you go ahead and click on Save Changes. And I'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, and you'll see up top, it's going to tell you that the settings have been saved. Now, the next one that we can click on is we can click on the writing. There really isn't too much to do here. Um, most of the time, I will leave this exactly how it is on the writing. And then the reading, for now we're going to leave this the same, but this does give you the opportunity once we create a page or two, what we can do is change it so that our front page either displays your latest posts or if you do create a specific page for your front page, we could go ahead and select it here. We could just go ahead and select it and then tell, like I'll click on instead of our home page being our latest post, we'll say it's a sample page, okay, um, it'll ask you here how many posts we want to show at most, syndication feeds, different choices for when it does show an article, if it's going to just show a summary or the full text. For now, I'm going to just click on Save Changes. And if we go to our website now, if we go to our our website, you can see that it's changed from having the, the posts that were there before. Now you'll see that we have the sample page in here, okay, as opposed to just the post. Now, if you, I go back and I go have it show the latest post, just so you can see the difference, when I refresh my home page, you're going to see that instead of showing that first page, it's now showing a collection of posts. And because I only have one post, this sample post. It's only showing that one. But if you had a bunch of different posts on here, it would be showing all those different posts on here. Okay. Now, the next setting that, and this is kind of important, especially if you want to cut down on spam. And it's something that I do, and it's something that I recommend you do too. Okay. You don't have to, but it is something that I recommend. 
You'll see right here under the default article settings, you see this little box that comes checked and it allows people to post comments on new articles. And truthfully, I don't like people who post on my WordPress blogs. It, it generally gets filled up with spam. It's generally just other people looking to spam my site. Generally not really looking to add any value or content to my site. Like I said, they're primarily just spamming my site with either a link to their website or maybe an affiliate offer. So on all of my blogs, I generally uncheck that. And on a post-by-post -post basis, when we go on and create some posts later on, you'll be able to see that you can change that as well from inside each post. So even though your main site settings will say don't allow people to post, if you go ahead and create a new post, and you do want people to be able to post comments on that, you'll have the opportunity later on to do that. So all this other stuff, uh, I generally will uncheck these. Okay, I generally will uncheck those. And I also will leave the rest of these pretty much, pretty much as is. Down here you have the avatar if you want people to see the avatar. Um, most people, if they have their own website, will have some sort of avatar, meaning, you know, a picture of themselves. And you can choose to show avatars or not show avatars. I usually leave that just blank. Um, we go ahead and set our maximum rating. If you're going to be doing a site that is suitable for all our audiences, just go ahead and leave that G clicked, meaning G that it's good for all audiences. And then down here, with users without a custom avatar, you can decide what they're going to go ahead and show. Like I said, we're really not going to be allowing people to comment anyway, so this doesn't matter too much. But just go ahead and click on Save Changes. Okay. Now, media right here. This is going to basically be telling you when you do post pictures or thumbnails, it's going to set, because it does automatically set thumbnails, you can choose what size that you want them to be. Um, you can choose the sizes for images when you post onto your pages, how big you want the max to be, how big you want a large size to be, how big you want medium size to be. So you can go ahead and change these around how you want. Um, and what you want to do, just go ahead and click on Save Changes. Now, the one that's most important, okay, is this right here under Permalinks. And this is very important because the base structure of WordPress, okay, you can see when I click on my, my post, okay, it's going to have my domain name followed by a slash, then a question mark, then a P equals 1, meaning P equals post 1. Okay, and that's the permalink structure. And it's just, it's not good for SEO. It's also not good for navigation because people really don't know what they are. So what I like to do and what you should do is instead of leaving that on default, go ahead and write down here, you see where it says post name. Okay, what that's good, if you select that, what that is going to do is when you go ahead and create new posts and new pages, it's going to use the title of those posts and pages as the actual page name. So I'll go ahead and save this and I'll, and I'll give you a quick example. Okay. If we go over and we create a new post, okay, we'll just go ahead, click on post, add new, and we're going to call this new post. Okay. And we'll just go ahead and publish this. Now when we go back over to our WordPress site, okay, you can see a couple of things have changed. Because I have changed my permalink settings to this post name, okay, what's happened is, first off, this first sample post is no longer P equals 1. It's called Hello World, and it's grabbing that right from the title of the page. And you can see... We'll go back to the home page here. And you can see with our new post that I just created, if I click on new post, you'll see that it says new dash post. And that really is good for search engine optimization because search engines, they do look at the content of a page to help 
you know, determine what the page is about. So if you can leave that, or rather check that over to post name, you're just going to have a much better structure on your site. It's going to be clearer, easier to navigate, and all around it's going to do better in the search engine. So make sure you go ahead, click on post name, save those changes, and those are pretty much it as far as the basic configuration settings on your WordPress site. So I will see you in the next video. You are going to love this next WordPress how-to video on how to install plugins. All right, now in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how to install some different plugins. And basically what a plugin for WordPress is, a plugin is another piece of software that gets added to WordPress that helps it perform another task or helps it perform tasks better. So if we just go to Google right now, okay, and if we do a search for best WordPress plugins, you'll see that there's, there's really millions of results out there. And what I found right here is this little website here where it's offering the top 10 WordPress plugins for 2012. I looked around and this is a pretty pretty recent post by the Search Engine Journal, which is a pretty big website, and they've offered up their top 10 WordPress plugins. Now, I'm not going to bore you, and I'm not going to say that you need all of these by any means, but what I am going to do is I am going to recommend that you get the top couple of of WordPress plugins, okay? And you can see this one here, the first one that they list is WordPress SEO. And if we just go over to our dashboard, okay, you can see over here on the left-hand side that there's a section called plugins. And we can go ahead and click on plugins. And it has these plugins that came standard, like I said, I really don't use these. I'm not so sure why you need it, especially the Hello Dolly. I don't use that. But if we click on up here where it says Add New, okay, you're going to be brought to a place where you can go ahead and search for different plugins. It'll give you a list of popular plugins. And you can see that this WordPress SEO that we had just found over here is listed as one of these popular plugins. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on install now. And it's going to just go ahead and give you a, an extra warning and ask you, are you sure you want to install this plugin? Go ahead and click OK. And it's going to go through. It's going to unpack everything. It's going to install the plugin. And then before you can start using the plugin, you are going to have to go in and click on the activate plugin. Okay, and what that's done is we've just gone ahead and installed WordPress SEO by Yoast. Okay, and they're going to ask us, do we want to allow tracking, do not tracking? I generally don't allow tracking. I mean, that's certainly something that you can change if you want to. Um, it's not super important. In fact, we're getting a little error here. But generally, that sometimes that happens. Um, all I did was backed out of it, and everything appears to be running fine now. But I also do want to... This is a great plug-in right here, this W3 Total Cache. And what that does is that allows WordPress to just work a little bit faster. So if we go ahead and post that in the box, you'll see that when we search... It comes up and you can see it's rated very well. So I'm going to go ahead and install. Yes, I do want it installed. It's going to install, unpack the package. We're going to just once again go ahead and click on activate plugin. Okay, the plugin is activated. So you can see we have a couple of new plugins that have been activated. And those plugins have also, they show right up on our main dashboard page. You can see we have the performance plugin. Okay which is the W3 that we just set up. 
And this plugin is going to have all kinds of different directions and stuff. These videos don't go into the scope of showing you how to set up that plugin, but you can see there's all kinds of instructions here. Once you get your site set up, that's when you can go ahead and fiddle around with your performance plugin. For now, you really don't have to worry about it. It just is a good idea to get that set up. Okay. And then also, same with the SEO, you're going to have this SEO dashboard right here. And they'll take you right through, once you get your site set up and once you've gone through all these videos, you'll then want to come back to this SEO Yoast WordPress plugin and just go ahead, take a tour. Um, you can read up on all the different instructions that they have. They have lots of of different instructions, lots of help. There's support forum out there. There really is a lot of different help out there, but I just wanted to show you how to go ahead and install plugins, and I will see you in the next video. To make your WordPress website look nice and groovy, you're going to want to choose a theme and install a theme, and this next video is all about how you can do that. So now in this video, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just go ahead, head right to your dashboard, just click on the dashboard here. And in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that we can go ahead and change the appearance of our WordPress site, because this is our WordPress site right now. If we just hit refresh, you're going to see this picture keeps changing. We've got a menu up here with a sample page over here on the right hand side. This area here are widgets. And I'll show you in just a little bit how to clean this area up. But you can see it's a really basic looking site. It's not too exciting. If we go to our dashboard, you can see from here, we can go ahead and customize this theme. This is the 2011 theme. Um, it's the standard WordPress theme that comes with WordPress right now. It's not a bad looking theme. It's better looking than the 2012, if you ask me. But there's all kinds of settings that we can change in here. Like we could change our, our title and tagline if we wanted to. We could decide to show header text or not. Okay. We can change up the colors here. Like I can change the colors for the header text. Pretty much anything that I want. Okay. We can change it so that it's a, a black or a dark background as opposed to a light background. We can change link colors. We can change lots of things. With this theme, we can go ahead and set our content to the left. We can set content to the right. We can go with one column, no sidebar. From here, we can change our header image. What Right now, what it does is this header image, it goes ahead and it's going to cycle through all the different images that are there. Like it's got all these images in there. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead, upload an image, add a new image. There's all kinds of things that we can do. For right now, we're going to just leave it as is. We can set our background image if we want to. We can just go ahead, select a new file on our computer, upload a background image. And once again, we can set our static we can set our front page to either a static page where we would go ahead and select the page or your latest post. And for now, we're going to just leave it on latest post. And that's all fine and good if you want to keep the standard theme that's with it. But WordPress offers a whole bunch of different themes. And themes are basically the dressing on the website. And you can see the installed theme is this 2011 also comes standard with a couple of other themes. Like if we just go ahead and activate this 2012 theme right now, okay, you can see that we've just activated a new theme. And when I hit refresh, you can see that the website, it, it's totally different now. Like it's, it's not really as good looking. Um, it's just a, a different look to it than what was there before, okay? You can see that, all right? And once again, this theme also has customized options. We can set background images. We can set images. We can set our colors. We can do all kinds of things. 
But truthfully, for now, I am going to go back to this 2011 theme. I just click on the Activate, and it automatically brought back this theme. But I also want to show you where you can go. So with themes, you can go out and you can buy themes. Like you could go to you could go to Google and just type in WordPress themes. Okay, and there's lots of different themes. There, there's places that you can buy themes, get themes for free. But for now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you right inside of WordPress where we can get some different themes. So if you just click on up here where it says install themes, okay, what we can do is we can either search for something, okay, or we can go ahead and decide, oh, do I want one column, two columns? You can check off the types of things that you would like, okay? We can look at some of the newest themes that were uploaded. So we could go ahead and add this theme right now, okay? Any of these themes. We can search through the themes. We can look at different featured themes. These are all themes that are free to install. Like, let's just, for the heck of it, Let's just go through and, hey, let's, let's take a look at this theme right here, Pinboard. Go ahead, install theme. Click on the install theme. We can look at a live preview, and it's going to show us what this new theme is going to look like. This looks like it's a theme that's really good for mobile, but you can see it's totally different from what we had before. Okay? I mean, totally different. So... You can either scroll through here, look at different themes. You can see, I mean, there really are so many different themes. Once again, we'll search, and we can say, okay, I'd like to have a, a theme with a right sidebar. I'd like it to be white, and I'd like to be able to have a custom menu, flexible header, and featured images, or any different things that you would like, say a custom background, front page posting, custom colors, whatever you like, and then click on find themes. And what WordPress is going to do, you can see nothing showed up for us. We might have gone a little too, too crazy with some of these choices. But if we do a search for white with right sidebar, find themes, you can see they're giving us all kinds of different themes. And we can just scroll through here and find something that you like, okay? Like I said, the basic theme that comes with it, it's free, and it does good enough for most people. I just wanted to show you how you can change your theme and change the entire look of your site very easily. Like this is one here, this looks interesting, install now. I'm gonna do a live preview, and you can see that this is what this theme looks, quite a bit different from the theme that we have on there already. Okay. Once again, I'm not really I'm not really too keen on that theme. We can go look through the featured again, see if there's anything neat. Like this is a pretty neat looking theme. That's a real neat looking theme. Actually, it's a live it's a responsive theme, which means that it adjusts. This is a good theme, like if you want to do um, a mobile website, you can see responsive means that it will respond to, if you have a very narrow web page, meaning that if you're on, say, a cell phone or a smartphone, rather, like an iPhone or something like that, it's going to scroll everything automatically right to the correct size, which is a really nice thing. Which, this is a really neat theme. It has lots of different... Um, you can set different colors, like we could set the color to anything that we wanted. Okay, we can set a background image if we want. We can set our front page. All kinds of different things. It's a nice looking theme, but for now we are going to just go back and use the standard theme that did come with it, the 2011. Okay, and but... If you do want to install themes, there's several ways you can do it. You can either, like I said, search for it. You can search online, okay, at a website. You can buy a theme, and then they would give you the actual files to the theme, and from there 
you can just go ahead and upload the theme. They show you recently updated. Lots of different themes out there. So don't feel that you're stuck with the theme that they give you. There are so many different themes out there and you really can change. Like, let's say that, you know, the holidays coming up, maybe uh, you wanted to do something for Christmas. We could just click that install now, see the live preview, and you can see our, our theme now, it has a Christmassy vibe to it. So themes are really cool. There's lots of different themes that you can get out there. You don't need to spend any money on themes, really. There are a lot of different themes out there that are free. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to customize this theme a little bit on its own. I'll see you in the next video. All right, for some further updates and customizations, you're going to want to know about how to change the look of WordPress. Get it here in this next video. Now in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to just show you how that we can change the look a bit of WordPress. Okay, because right now what we're doing is we're using this stock 2011 theme. Okay, and you can see when I refresh this page, every time I refresh this page, a new header is going to show up. These are just headers that were pre-installed. And it's really not something that I I want. I don't want my headers to be rotating. And you can also see that over on this right-hand side, this is the widget area. And you can see that it's loaded with a lot of stuff in here. Really a lot of stuff that I really don't want in here too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to change some of this thing. So if we go to Appearance, okay, over here on the left-hand side, and then click on themes. You can see from in here, I have some theme options. Okay, like we can change our widgets. We can change our theme options. Okay, where I can choose to, the color. I can choose the different layout. You can see this has the content on the left, widget area on the right. Or we can choose for content on the right with the widgets on the left. And if I set it to that and then refresh this page you can see what's happened is you can see our main content has moved from the left hand side over to the right okay i generally like it's just a personal preference so i like generally my content to be on the left and my widgets to be on the right so that's the way that i'm gonna save that i can go ahead and change our link color to really any color that we want in the rainbow you can see I can change that. And then when I go ahead and refresh this, you can see, you know, that these links here have changed to suit the colors that I want. Okay. Um, we can also go ahead and right now let's go ahead and go over to this header area because right now what this is doing is it's choosing random images and I don't want it to choose random images. I'd like it to show one of these images and have it always be there. Or if I wanted to as well, I could go ahead and upload. Okay. I could upload a new header image. Okay. And you can see that their suggested width is going to be 1000 pixels wide by 288 pixels high. And if you'd like to do that, all you have to do is go ahead and right here, we can choose the file. You can just choose the file right from your computer and go ahead and upload that. I'm going to just use this image that's already here. That's fine. It looks like a rim or something like that. Okay. I can even choose to remove the header image. So if we remove the header image, okay, and then we refresh our site, you can see I've got no header image here. It just has the text in there. Heck, I can even get rid of text. I can get rid of header text. Okay. And you can see it's gotten rid of that header text, but I don't want that right now. I'm going to use little header text. And I'm also going to use one of these images. So if I go ahead and save changes and refresh this, you can see that 
it's using this image in all the different pages. Like if I go to this new post page, it's going to be there. If I go to the sample page, it's still going to be there. Okay, so those are a couple ways that we can change our appearance. We can change our background colors. Like if we wanted to, right now we have no background whatsoever, but if we wanted to, we could change the background. We could upload an image or we could change the color to almost any color that you want. As you can see right now, it's kind of like a gray color. Okay, and we could change it to purple if we want. I mean, I personally, I don't think it looks good, but you can see if we refresh it, it's now a purple, it's now a purple site. Okay, so there's lots of different things that you can change. Okay, now the other thing that I do want to change is I want to change my widgets because what these widgets are is there's a main sidebar area. There's also a showcase slider on here, footer area widgets, but what are showing up and what I don't like right now are all this stuff over here on the right, like this metadata, I definitely don't want that in there. And you can see that it's right here. And all we need to do to get rid of it is just hold your mouse down over it, then click the button and just drag it over to the left. So we're gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of these just to make it look better. I'm gonna get rid of the search bar, I'm going to get rid of comments. I'm going to get rid of categories. I'm going to get rid of the archives. And all I really want to leave there are the recent posts. And now when I refresh this page, you can see that our, our area here has cleaned up a little bit. And you can see these are widgets that are built right into into WordPress, okay? And they allow you to put different different things over here on the right hand side. You can see there's also a text widget and what I'd like you to do is for now just go ahead and grab onto that, hold it down, okay, and then drag that over here into there. And we can name this. This is a good place to put ads or you could put an opt-in. Okay, you would put your either ad AdSense code or different banner code or an opt-in form. We can put all those things here if we wanted to. And if you look, when we go ahead and refresh this site, you can see all that stuff would be in there. Okay, you don't need to have that, but that's just a way that you can add in. Or if you wanted a message to your visitors, you could even put like, if you had a local business, you could put a map right to your business in there as well. But those are just some ways that we can go ahead and play with the look of our site and really change things around quite a bit. Okay, so I will see you in the next video. The most important and basic of operations when using WordPress is to how to add posts and pages. Find out right now with this video. So now in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how to actually add some posts and pages to your WordPress blog. Now, there's a difference between, if you look over on the left hand side, we have a section for posts and we have a section for pages, okay? And really, the easiest way to explain this is generally posts are going to be added to your website all the time. Like when you have something new to say, if you have new information that you want to put on your WordPress site, um, you're generally going to use a post to do that. Now, a page is going to be something that's more permanent. A lot of times, pages will show up here in your menu. Like you can see, we only have the one page on this site, this sample page. But if I, and it, it's showing up in our menu. Okay, this is the menu right here. And now, if I go ahead and add another page, which is easy enough to do, if I just go to pages, okay, right up here, we can click on add new page. All right, and from here, we can call this page anything we want. Let's call it our privacy policy. Okay, 
this page okay and you can see we can do all kinds of things right in here we just enter in our text that we want right in this page it's very easy to do you just type and then you can see we also have because we installed the WordPress SEO by Yoast we also have some different selections down here that we're not going to worry about this right now that's something that you can do at a later time okay that's something that you can do at a later time but it's going to be built right in for now all we're going to be caring about is this area right here Okay, and you can see it works just like a word processor, anything like that. We can go ahead and we can choose to center things. We can align it to the left. We can bold things. We can do all kinds of different functions from in here. We can italicize things. Once we're happy with how we want this page, what we do is we can just go ahead and click on publish. Okay. And what we've done is we've created a brand new page on our site. And if we go ahead and refresh our home page, you're going to see that it shows up right here in our menu. So if we want to visit that page, we can just click on the sample page right here. Oh, I'm sorry. The privacy policy here. We can just click on that and you can see we just made this brand new page. Okay, everything is there. Now, what I'll do now is, and like I said, pages are generally permanent fixtures on the site. They're going to show up in your navigation, right, in your menu. Now, let's go to posts, and I'm going to create a new post. Okay, and we'll just call this. And everything else is the exact same. We can just go ahead and... This is the new post that I don't know what that means, but you can see once again we can bold things we can italicize things we can do all that stuff to make you know the the text on here look fancy okay and we can decide what kind of post for now I'm gonna just use a standard post a lot of times you will be using standard posts we can add new categories if we wanted to categories are a great way to keep your site nice and relevant and nice and SEO fresh but for now, we're going to just leave this with one category. And if we click on Publish, and then we go over to our website, you'll see that. Now, this new post, it doesn't show up in our menu bar because only pages show up in our menu bar. But if we look over here under our recent posts, you can see that this is that new post that we just put in there. Okay. So you can see adding pages and posts, very easy. If you want to add a page, you just go to Pages and then Add New. And if you want to add a post, you just need to go to Posts and then Add New as well. Very simple, very easy to do. Shouldn't have too much trouble. Um, that's the way that you go ahead and add your pages and posts to your WordPress site. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can add some pictures and video. You can make all of your posts in WordPress and your pages look lovely, snazzy, and more appealing to people by adding pictures and videos to them. And here's how to do that. Now, in this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how you can add pictures and videos to your posts and your pages. And I'm going to just show you right inside of a post. So if we go to this post that we just created. Now, if we wanted to add an image right here, there's several ways that we could 
go about adding this image. Okay. First way we can click on this add media button. All right. And it's going to ask us, do we want to upload a file or choose from our media library? And I want to upload a file. So if you just click on upload a file, you can do a number of different things. Like you can just drag a file right in there. You can just drag a file right in there from your desktop or from your your computer. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag a picture over here from my computer. And this is just a picture of my dog here. <laughs> I'm uploading it. It'll take just a second. Take just a second. And it's going to ask me, how do I want to, do I want to insert this into post? So I'm going to just go ahead and switch the orientation on this. And if you see, we just click on that edit there. And what I can do is I can just go ahead and rotate that over to the right. And that's how I want it. I'm going to go ahead and save that image okay we've saved that image to the correct format and it'll just take a second and then here we can go ahead and you can see it's still working through it just took a second for that to go and now if we just click on update and then we go and visit this page, this is my new post, you'll see that we got our nice little picture of my doggy here. And when he gets blown up, you can see the page right there. Now, if we go over here and back into, into this page here, you can see that we have some options here. And what we can do is we can like link this to a page, we can change things. We can go ahead and set some different parameters for that here. We can say that we want this to be centered. We want it to go to the right. We want no formatting on it, whatever we want. We could set a link here. We could set a website address here. So when someone clicks on this picture, they're brought to a different website. But you can see it's real easy. Like if we want to just say okay let's go ahead and center this click update you can see that it goes and centers everything for us and whenever you make changes you do want to make sure that you hit this update button over here on the right and then when we go ahead and refresh this page you can see now my little doggy he's in the right he's in the middle here okay so that's how you add a picture to a post or a page it's the exact same way all that we're going to do, I'll show you one more time. All that we're going to do is we're going to select where we want the picture. We're going to click on Add Media. And it's going to say, hey, do we want to insert this from our media library or do we want to upload a file? Okay, we can create galleries with different pictures. We can set this image as a featured image. Okay, like I can set this picture as the featured image on this post and you can see it's going to show up as the featured image okay now to go ahead and add a video videos are quite easy once again we can use the media okay we can add whatever we want we can add video we can add uh, just like we did before when it says upload files we could drag a video right in here but honestly the easiest way to add video especially or a YouTube video is if you just go to YouTube and you grab the URL address if you grab let me let me open this and I'll show you I'm gonna add okay we're at YouTube here okay and one of my my favorite guys online this epic meal time they do these funny videos and if you go ahead and grab the URL, it's going to be like youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals. And then it's going to have 
this little tag here, if we copy that, okay, and if we then go ahead and just paste that right into our post, WordPress is smart enough to know that we want that to play the video. So if we just go ahead and refresh here, you can see our video is now right in our post. And if we click on play, Epic Meal Time Online Cook it's going to start playing the video for us very easily. And you can add, you know, your own videos if you don't have them on YouTube. But truthfully, YouTube is the easiest way to get videos onto a WordPress site. So I recommend you use YouTube. If uh, you know you don't have a YouTube account, just get a YouTube account if you want to upload some videos to it. And that'll be the easiest way for you to do it. All right, I will see you in the next video. And so that people can navigate around your site real nicely, what you want to do is create WordPress menus and here's how you create WordPress menus so now in this this video here what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about menus okay now WordPress this theme especially and WordPress in general it's automatically gonna add all your pages to the standard menu theme here and you may or may not want that on so what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how you can change some things around. So if you go to appearance and then over to menus right here, okay, you're going to see that we can give, we can create a custom menu if we'd like. So what I'm going to, I'm going to just call this new menu. Okay. I'm going to click on create menu. All right. And what we can do is we can either decide to, automatically add new top level pages okay we could add even a new menu if we wanted to or we can choose what pages and whatnot that we want to appear on our menu so perhaps maybe we just want our privacy policy to appear on our menu if we click add to menu you're gonna see that in our new menu this privacy policy is in there okay and just the privacy policy is in there. So what I want you to do is click on Save Menu. Okay. And now what we need to do is we need to tell the theme that we want to use this new menu. So we'll go ahead and click on Save. Select the new menu, then click on Save. And I want to show you just a little difference. So right now we have all three pages that we have on our site. Our home page, our privacy policy page, and a sample page showing up on our menu but I didn't want that I didn't want all those pages showing up on the menu I just want the privacy policy so if we just go ahead and click refresh here you're gonna see that now our menu is only showing the privacy policy okay so when someone's on a post they're not going to be shown all those other pages all right so that's just a way that you can have your menus working and if we we put it back to how it was and hit refresh you're gonna see that all three pages now once again are showing up on the menu so if you don't want anything to show up on the menu we could like go ahead remove this click save okay and we'll tell it to show the new menu click save again and now look, when we refresh this, you're going to see that there's absolutely no menu at all on here. Okay. But menus, it's a good way to set up your navigation, show your important pages up on the menu. Like if you were going to have a website that was selling something, you'd want to have an order page up on there or a specials page. So that's just a way that you can do your menus inside of WordPress. By now, you should be able to without too much trouble go ahead and install WordPress set up you know the configuration on WordPress add some posts add some pages add some pictures and video to your website to your WordPress site and then all of a sudden you've got yourself a working functioning WordPress site so I hope you've enjoyed these videos go back and you know learn about the plugins that you've installed 
Um, go ahead, rewatch these videos. They should help you, and I hope they've been a help for you. Thank you very much.